Derek Waters, you are the creator of uh, Drunk History, which just got nominated for its second consecutive Emmy uh, for Variety Sketch Series. The, the, the program is so funny, and I'm not just saying this to blow smoke up your ass. It really is a hilarious program. Where did the idea for this program come about? The idea for this little program, the little program that could, it all started, it started over a, a night of drinking uh, with my dear friend, Jake Johnson, who's a great actor. He's on The New Girl and a lot of great movies. And uh, him and I were uh, unemployed, out of work actors and drinking one night at his place. And we, you know, who doesn't want to talk about Otis Redding, sober or drunk, but we were talking about the great Otis Redding. And Jake was so excited to tell me this story about, you know, unfortunately when Otis Redding died in that plane crash, he had a story that Otis knew the plane was going to crash. And, you know, he told me, he said, yeah, man, right before Otis got on that plane, he looked at his wife and he was like, you take care of yourself, baby. And she was like, I will, Otis, you take care of yourself. And he's like, I got to go. She's like, I know, I'll see you when you get back. No. Otis has got to go. And he was so passionate about it. And, you know, when you're with anyone that's very excited to tell you something, you don't want to cut off their passion. So you're just nodding. But the whole time I was just imagining Otis Redding having to come back to life, move his lips to what Jake was saying, but also shaking his head at me like this never happened. So I thought, oh, maybe we could reenact that. And then I thought, well, everyone gets drunk and talks about music. What's something people don't get drunk and talk about and that you can, you know, make the joke of, oh, there was a mistake. There was a mistake, you know. And so I decided to get true stories that were from, you know, the world of history. So it was just a one time idea. I was doing a show at the Upright Citizens Brigade in Los Angeles and um, showed the video with Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr with Michael Sarah and Jake Johnson. And uh my dear friend got drunk and told us about the duel and I just thought, okay, that was fun. Let's move on to other stuff. But none of my other stuff was doing anything and people really liked it. And Jack Black saw it and said he wanted to be Ben Franklin. So I just, it's kind of just like become its own wave that I'm just riding until um, I get to the shore. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you could also take credit for the success of Hamilton on Broadway. I mean, oh, you know, all of it. I take all of that credit. I yeah, take I mean, all of it. Yeah. That all started. Yeah. If yeah. it weren't for you, I mean, that, that, that wouldn't have happened. I've got four Tonys. All four <laughs> of my guinea pigs names are Tony. <laughs> <laughs> People still get guinea pigs. Yes, I have a I have a friend uh, in Charlottesville who has uh, two pet guinea pigs. Are you going to judge me if I guess he or she is single? Uh, no, he's been with his boyfriend for uh, several years now. That's love. <laughs> that is. They also just got guinea a puppy pig. too. So. Oh well, that's a good animal friendly house there. <laughs> so. Originally, this started uh, as a couple of skits for Funny or Die, mm -hmm. uh, and now, and then it got picked up for Comedy Central. What was the process that was involved in taking that from just these individual skits to structuring it into a 30-minute program? Well, it was, you know, I'm a comedy snob, and I always will be, and so I was my own worst enemy going like, this will never work. It's a one-time idea. It's a five-minute idea. What are you going to do with, like, you know, I get it. They're drunk and a famous person is moving their lips. How are you going to make that last for more than five minutes? So, you know, it was, you know, there were a lot of inspirations behind it. I love Stephen Fry in America. He did a great show going across the country. And I thought, what if it was kind of like a travel thing where it's like a documentary type show where I'm going to different cities to learn more about our country. And so that was kind of like, that was the pitch and uh, they liked it. Um, and so that's how I was like, well, this, it's gotta be more than just, you know, someone drunk and it being reenacted. There's gotta be more legs to it. So then that's how it started. And then it became more of like, we got to find really cool, obscure stories. Cause that's, you know, the only way you're going to keep an audience is good stories. You know, the premise is going to be the same, but the stories have got to keep, um, making you go, why weren't we taught this in school? And, oh, my God, this actually did happen. So, yeah, that's become the goal um, now. 
so you know dealing with what I find so interesting about the show is that you just because you sometimes you just never know what kind of drunk a person is going to be. Yeah, that could just lead to some really interesting, you know, just interactions mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, awkwardness. And I'm just wondering, what's the most awkward or uncomfortable moment that's happened with a person because of their while filming? That's been because of their inebriation. Mm. Well. Without outing anybody, I would say everybody has something that is very uncomfortable, which is they never believe me that they've told the story. And that is very uncomfortable because uh, they're my friends. So I'm like, I'm putting them in a state that they've agreed to that makes them like completely forget that they did this thing. And so it's uncomfortable, like, um, when somebody you love thinks you're lying to them, like, wait, we haven't even told the story. No, I promise we told the story. It happens every single time. They just never believe me. Um, but, you know, I always want to be a therapist, so it works out. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, you never know what anyone's going to be like and in, intoxicated. So 90% of the people I choose, I've definitely had a, a drink with before, so I know what I'm getting into. Has there ever been an instance where you have uh, someone who, you know, they're drinking and they've had, and they keep on having drinks, but they're just not getting drunk? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those people are hard to film because, you know, it's the common question I always get is like, are they really drunk? Yes, they're really drunk. And the ones that don't seem drunk are just very good at, <laughs> they're out, they're whole, they're, they can hold their alcohol very well. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it, it's hard because you don't want to make anyone sick, but it's also the premise of the show. <laughs> they have to be drunk. So, I mean, can you imagine if they were acting? They would all have Oscars. Oh, God, I mean, yeah. I hope they all do someday, but not from this. <laughs> <laughs> they still had the... Uh, they used to have um, a category at the Emmys for individual performance in a variety uh, program and you'd have sometimes people from Saturday Night Live. You'd have stand-up mm -hmm. people in there. Uh, concert specials would get nominated. This would be perfect for that if they still had that category. And believe me, there's a bunch of people on the site that would love to see that category return. I and would we'd like love that. to see. We would love to see some of the some of your some of the people in this program get nominated because they would. First of all, it'd just be awesome, and they would. I think they'd win. How can we help get this movement? going oh god you know i i don't know the formal steps but i'm gonna talk to my boss uh talk to my boss tom at the website and see All what right. we can do with this because this you is let something me know what i i agree yeah we'll we'll get this That's we'll great. find some we'll find some way to promote it or something like that this aggression will not stand yes <laughs> it is injustice it is injustice <laughs> so uh, as i uh, said before you just received your uh second uh, Emmy nomination for a uh, variety sketch series. Your first one was last year. Yeah. What, what was it like getting that first one last year? What was mm. it like finding out about that? I don't know. I mean, any human being like hopes what they're doing gets received well, you know, but I, um, I just felt like, Oh my God, like this thing. I, I still feel like I'm making movies in my backyard with friends. You know, it still feels like that. But then when you like get acknowledged from the actual, the actual Academy, not like, like the neighborhood mayor or something. It's like the actual Academy. You're just kind of, it just, it, it takes a lot to like sink in. It still hasn't. I know everyone says that like pretending to be humble, but I'm just being honest. Like it's something that I just like can't comprehend. It's just a feeling of like, wow, this thing that I was just doing for fun is now like becoming something that people really love. And so I'm just honored and very grateful. And your program actually uh, won an Emmy last year for the costumes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's got to be, that, that's got to be, you know, very surreal. That's something that, you know, originated your brain, seeing it come to reality has actually resulted in some people getting some major recognition for that. Yeah. Yeah. For, you know, a part of the show that is like, you know, 
purposely homemade of like, you know, sometimes we're wearing, you know, purple Nikes in the 1800s, you know, but people are seeing how much time and passion um, everyone puts into, you know, the wardrobe. And yeah, it's just, and then this year with production design and editing, like the editors really are the best editors in the world because anyone that watches the show, will you can see like, Man, there's a lot of editing. I mean, it's eight hours of me sitting with someone drunk. So there's, you know, seven hours and 45 minutes of garbage <laughs> to go through. Um, but, um, yeah, so I'm just, I'm proud of my team and I'm very, very thankful that we're invited to the ball. So uh, the episode that uh, you that you and your team chose to submit for the Emmys this year uh, for consideration was the Spies episode, which uh, is one of the great episodes of the show because it contains the, uh, I think by now, infamous um, bit of uh, Harriet Tubman and her bad bitches, uh, which is still... (laughs) Yeah, her army full of bad bitches. Her army full of bad bitches, which is... I remember when someone played that for me for the first time, and I was on the floor laughing it was so oh, hilarious <laughs> um, and 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 of course having octavia spencer play harriet tubman is like that that is like perfect casting on any level it's so yeah. wonderful what- it's crazy because it's like you're with listen crystal west is one of my favorites and and she's the narrator and you know like like I said, it's like you're making movies with your friends in your backyard. Then all of a sudden, like an Oscar winner is moving her lips and playing it like, oh, my God, are we making the Harriet Tubman movie right now? Like, it just sincerely felt like, man, the, like, I'm just watching this. I don't even I, – I would love to be part of this show. I don't know what it is, but I like it. What, so, yeah. what, what made you uh, uh, think to submit this episode? I think, you know, you know, the goal of the show is really, you know, okay, maybe we've heard of uh, someone like Harriet Tubman, freeing slaves, but did we ever know she was a spy? You know, like finding like something familiar and then adding something brand new. And the Harriet Tubman one was so exciting to me, along with, you know, Roald Dahl, the children's author of like we all know his books, but who knew he was a spy? So it's a mixture of the stories you know, and then the performances of Will Ferrell, Octavia Spencer, and Alia Shawcat is one of my all-time favorites that we've ever had. She's so good. Yeah, oh, she was yeah. wonderful as Virginia Hall. Yeah, yeah. She had a wobbly leg. <laughs> uh, just uh, her uh, when she uh, undergoes the uh, like the physical transformation is, uh, and you know, just wandering around France delivering cheese and shit is just one is just wonderful. It's, yeah, she looked like Miss Doubtfire. Yeah, exactly. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that you know she's an American speaking with that Australian voice coming out of her. That was yeah. wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Bye. I'm glad you liked it. So, uh, and it's also interesting uh, that you submitted that episode because uh, another show that broke through with the Emmys this year was The Americans. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, maybe Which you're... I haven't seen. Well, haven't... So it seems like for the longest time the Emmy voters hadn't either, but now they finally have. So, um, uh, they, they finally have and they liked it. So, okay. uh, maybe it's part of a trend. Maybe we'll have more stuff about espionage coming out. I'm really hoping yes, for that. Yes, that's the way it should be, right? Yes, exactly. Especially if it benefits Mother Russia. Um, Mother Russia. Uh, so, you know, history is always interesting to learn about, but I always like thinking about what's going on now and thinking about how future generations will judge us or, or look back on, these sort of, on what we're doing mm-hmm. now or what we've done in the past couple of years. So I just, um, I guess as my as my uh, sort of final question Mm -hmm. is if you could choose anything from, let's say the past 10 years to depict on your show Mm -hmm. uh, for future generations, one, what would it be Two, who would you want to narrate it? And who would you want to see star as the central characters? Great question. I'm going to have to give a long answer. Let's talk it out. Let's think about the last 10 years. So 10 years ago was 2006. The past 10 years, what great has happened? (laughs) 
what great has happened. Um, come on, 10 years, something good happened, right? Okay. Um, um, yeah, what are some, uh, I mean, what, it's too soon of what we're dealing with right now. And I don't know, something, possibly something with the Arab Spring. Yeah. Um, the election of um, uh, President Obama, the first African-American president. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, God. Um, the introduction of uh, reality TV star Sarah Palin. Um, oh, right. I still got, yeah, I got it. I don't know much about that young lady. <laughs> um, she's she's going to shoot straight to the top, believe me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, shoot. Is that, that's a gun joke, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, I, this sounds, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's hard. You know, I really think this isn't a, this isn't an actual exact story, but I do feel like the world of um, mental health is something that is explored, acknowledged now more than ever, and it should have been a long, long time ago. So, so many of these unfortunate things that have happened have so much to do with mental health and, um, I wouldn't want to talk about the things that have happened in 10 years, but I would like to find stories that happened many years ago that also are like, wait, that's the same shit that went on, you know, and, and any of these unfortunate instances of just like, um, trying to tell stories that are like, it, I never want the show to be political. I want it to like, make you think oh that's kind of like now but i'll never be like see that was wrong this is right it's just like it's history let's learn from it so i'm sorry i can't give like an exact specific thing but i think all the bad things and good things that have been going on I like to find stories that uh, give proof that we've been dealing with this type of stuff for a long time and let's try to figure out how to take care of everybody yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's also hard to, to sort of judge things even just the immediate, in the immediate future, you know. We're, we're right. going to have to have, you know, way more decades, probably long after we're all dead and gone, in order yeah. to have a proper, proper view of things. Well, it's like when people say what types, what, what is like the qualifications of a story, and the main thing is besides why weren't we taught this in school is it has to as long as it's happened, we can do it. But there's so many things that are still happening or the story isn't over yet. So um, uh, we'll see. But I, uh, I, yeah, I'm not trying to change the world, but I do like finding stories that relate to what we're dealing with now that we've been dealing with it for a while. Yeah. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. That's my motto. That's right. Dylan Panthers, baby. <laughs> the best. The best. Sorry I talk slow and I think slower. Oh, Sorry no, it's a long answer. It wasn't no, the, I didn't even answer it. Fine. I can't even tell you who was gonna, who's going to be in that. Let's just, say, let's, yeah, just have, ahead, make sure, let's just promise that, like, say, Bill Murray is going to be in it. You know what? That's so crazy. That's all I was going to say is whatever it is, Bill, uh, I want Bill Murray. That's it. Sounds that sounds great to me, and I'm sure that sounds great to all our uh, to all our readers as well. <laughs> yeah, they're not to like. <laughs> well, Derek, thanks so much for joining us. We wish you Thank all you. the best uh, for you. Emmy Night, uh, which in a category that's I pretty much owned by Comedy Central. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. three uh, three of their shows. Yeah, Key and Peele, uh, Inside Amy Schumer, mm -hmm. and uh, and your show, and yeah. so. Um, wish you the best of luck and all the best for you, man. Take, so good talking so to you. Thank you very much. Cheers.